This is a nice female wood frog. This is a really cool spotted salamander. This guy was just ran over. Hands on conservation. You're literally moving animals that have a high percentage chance of getting run over across the road. Salamander, Ambystoma, Maculatum. This is how they get crushed on roads. Now it's very early in the morning, so there's not much traffic. The rain is picking up. So here is a great example of what people have done. They put these signs up. It doesn't matter to normal people. They just blow through here, running over everything in their path anyway. But there are volunteers that'll come out to these crossings, these known crossings, like this, this area is full of vernal pools uh, and they will help them across. Of course, nobody's out here at 4.35 a.m. So, um, you know, even though I got a little bit of bang for my buck with moving these animals off the road, I am doing something. Let me show you what I mean. Well, you think that guy's looking for little things crossing the road? He's not even going that fast, but he will definitely kill a few. All right, so here you go. Here's what I'm talking about. And you have to become pretty numb to this stuff because you're going to see a ton of it. This guy was just ran over. He was not here before that car went around me. And this is about a quarter mile up the road. So this poor guy was just trying to go from here to here. Knows no better, doesn't realize a road is here and he needs to get out of the way. And he suffered the fate. What I do, and I know it's kind of gross, is I always move dead animals off the road because other animals that'll scavenge it or you know, even another toad might be on a descent trail. They end up getting hit as well. I see it a lot with vultures uh, picking away at, at carrion, but it happens for these little guys too. This I get asked all the time. How can I, how can I volunteer at one of these crossings? How do you find all these animals? Here is the simplest thing I can tell you. And here's something that I usually do. See these these crossings, they already have enough volunteers. They have people out with headlamps and orange vests on and they're bringing attention to the motorists so these animals do not get run over. This tip is worth the price of admission on this video. It's so simple. Go to your area, go to Google Satellite, zoom out, look for green areas, look for forested areas. Wait for a night in spring that is raining and just go map those roads out. I'm driving very slowly here so I don't run over anybody. Map those roads out and just ride them. Ride them and see what you find. That's what I've done for decades now. Like I said, these crossings have volunteers. They have a lot of like normal people that just like doing it and it's something new and fresh for them to do and that's great. That's awesome, that's hands-on conservation. But since these crossings are already taken care of, and it takes a lot of red tape, I uh, cut through red tape to get these like crossings like done, there's plenty of other animals out there getting crushed on the road. So drive those green areas, see what you find. I guarantee you, you will find plenty of amphibians to cross. See man, this sucks. This wasn't here either. So we have a... The spotted salamander was just hit. Absolutely annihilated from that car. That car killed at least two things. I still got some road to look at because I've been on this road and I've cleaned it all off. So that's two things that car killed for not paying attention. Again, it's not always the motorist's fault. They don't know any better, but that's why it's up to us. Looks like we have somebody else here. This looks like an American toad. Even though the rain's kind of died, it smells like amphibians out here. We'll see if we can cross a few more before the sun comes up. I'm not really expecting much. The rain's really died. All right, we have somebody else. So you see him moving? So here's the thing, these amphibians do not cross roads, the roads cross their habitat. For generations, these vernal obligates have traveled through the woods to get to vernal pools, which are seasonal pools, 
that dry up every year so they can't support fish. They breed here and lay eggs to foster in the next generation. They know nothing about road safety or looking both ways before they cross the road. All they are doing is their job and getting to the breeding pools to mate and lay eggs. So it's our job to help these guys across the street safely. We've done the damage here. We've had the impact. They don't know what kind of trouble they're getting into trying to cross the roads. So you didn't see it, but I actually saved that spotted from a car that was coming. So traffic is gonna start picking up here. Even though I'm finding very little, I think I'm just gonna keep on trying and see if I can just save a handful of uh, these salamanders. Even though the sun's about to come up in the distance, you can hear some peepers, just a few, and you'll hear those ducks, hopefully in the distance, hopefully you can hear that over my truck. Those are all wood frogs out there. I haven't seen any of them on the road yet today. Gotta help this guy across the road. Another small American toad. Just get him into the grass, always in the direction that they were going, because they have a job, either, either going to be heading towards the vernal pools, Go this way, buddy. Or away, depending on if they've already bred or not. A few quick definitions here. What is an actual vernal pool? So that's a depression in the woods that collects snow melt and spring rains into a temporary pond. Vernal means ephemeral, means seasonal. Uh, these are all interchangeable words. And when I say vernal obligate, it's very simply you break it down. It means that the amphibian is obligated to use the vernal pool. It's just the way they've evolved and they're always going to return to the pools that they were born in. So it's just hardwired into them as instinct. Okay, I think we have our first wood frog and I was afraid. Oh, watch out. Yes. This is a wood frog with the baddies sylvaticus. So when you hear those ducks calling out in the woods and you're wondering what all these ducks are doing out among the trees that you can't see, it's actually these little guys. There's my finger for reference. And it's their breeding calls to attract the females and foster in the next generation. The wood frog is another vernal obligate. Whereas the toad earlier I found is not a vernal obligate, it just will use vernal pools sometimes and we're gonna do a few more passes see if we can save a few more things there's only one more in this area I'd like to show you it's a spring peeper the real loud whistling guys that are really like ear piercing with the lack of rain I think I'm gonna need a little bit of luck to see one crossing the road there goes another wood frog so what do we do he was moving this way he really didn't need my help, but why not? Just give him a little helping hand. Go ahead, buddy. I keep saying this is the last test, but I keep finding like one or two things. Looks like a wood. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I didn't even see this guy. All right, that's another wood frog. We'll let keep going. Ah, this looks like a toad then. So that little bit of rain got things moving. Yeah. Can't find a peeper. Let me show you how goofy this is. Do you see this guy? Not oh, stay here. Look at how like tall and proud he is. Just sitting here. He's just waiting. Like a sitting duck waiting to get run over. Alright, now he's moving down the road, so we're gonna help him out. Into the wood you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now he's shy. <laughs> Come on, man. Alright, I'm gonna leave him go. Okay, last pass. Oh, here comes somebody across the street right now. It's hard to give up when you see some cars, but things are still moving. I might just, oh, oh, this is a nice female. Okay. This is a nice female wood frog. See how she's a little more red in color? And look over top of her, how fat she is. She is full of eggs. It's the first female I've seen. So things are still looking to move here because the males are always as is life more uh more eager to get to the breeding pools so here's a cool thing like you can do something you can make a difference 
you can do hands, this is hands-on conservation. You're literally moving animals that have a high percentage chance of getting run over across the road. You know, some people don't have the money to donate, uh, you know, to larger organizations bigger than themselves. But in the meantime, this is something you can do. And it feels great and it's fun. It's good for everybody. And here goes a spotted salamander right now. So hold on. Let's see him moving. He'd be fine, but let's just go take a look at him. See if there's a, this, this looks like another male. Let's see. I'm going to check out the cloaca. That's yeah, I think this is a male. He's like, dude, I'm out of here. And he should be safe. This is what we call a slow burn. I'm like ready to get to work, but I can't because these animals just keep on coming out. So this is a male. Well, that might be a female. Yeah, that's a small female. You can see how fat she is like in here. So she's got some eggs. <laughs> All right, girl, let's go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a female. Go ahead. Okay, this is the last pass. I'm making a promise to myself. Like, what is this dude doing? He's not even moving. He's just gonna lay here and wait for a car to come. Oh, that is a female. Look at how fat she is. She actually looks a little orange up here. My eyes deceiving me? This is a really cool spotted salamander. Yeah, she's fat. So I've seen one female spotted and two female wood frogs. Oh man, sheesh. And there's the frog crossing sign. Ugh. So good news, both of those cars didn't hit anything and nothing seemed to be moving on the road and the sun is about to start popping up here. So I think it's time to call it. I'm gonna take the long way out of here just in case I can get lucky, but you probably won't see me back. So remember, this is Bob Ferguson with Fast Nature. You wanna make your difference for nature? Get out there, move some things off the road. Keep your own safety in mind. Always in the same direction they're going. Those are the easy tips. Look for the green spots on your Google satellite. Step into the outdoors.